if somebody were to purposely target healthcare, people will die. What if you get an opportunity to sit down with a real life hacker? Will this change your mind about the way you see security and how exposed we are? Hey, welcome to another Talking Tech with a Techie Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make technology simple. And yes, I got to sit down with Ralph, the ethical hacker at Collision, to talk about all things security. It's certainly an eye opener. Check this out. Hi, I'm Ralph Achimendia, known as the Ethical Hacker. We're here at Collision in 2018 in New Orleans. And the term hacker has, for the most part, been addressed as a criminal term, really. And hacking is actually not knowing anything about it and then having to take it apart and figure out what it does and how it does it. And, uh, and in that process, what you actually learn to do is to make something do what it wasn't intentionally created for. Um, it's like taking whatever, something menial like a glass of water and using it as an amplifier, you know? Uh, that, that's really what hacking is. So it, it, both, I'd say, the, the good and the bad are necessary because they push innovation forward uh, and they push technology, in the right, I think, in the right direction. So to say that hacking is just a bad thing uh, is wrong, uh, but, but it's kind of the yin-yang. The bad has to exist for the good to, to also prevail. I think the Facebook uh, you know, scandal here with Cambridge Analytica is, is going in the direction that we don't want because those sort of things have been happening from the very beginning, right? They were just dark side things, uh, dark world uh, operations, if you will. And then what's happened is now you're, you're legitimizing that as marketing. Um, and, uh, and this is just the first scandal we see of a legitimate company doing something that would be considered a hack in a bad way of data breach. Um, you haven't really heard those terms being used with this Cambridge Analytica thing. Uh, you know, we all called it dark marketing when somebody was approaching about, I want this company's database and I'm willing to pay this much for it. And then, you, then it goes through there and within a matter of months, it's now in public, meaning in the legitimate hands of marketing companies. So it's not new at all, it's just, uh, this is just one of those that now you know. You know, you can secure the tech rather easily, honestly. Um, the hard things to, you know, the harder thing to secure is the process because the process is the use of the tech in life in some way. And then the impossible thing for the most part to secure is the people because the people are, you know, just by default, uh, sometimes dumb, you know? And I think that's, that's really the problem is that technology is not really addressing the people problem in security. It's, a, it's you know, it's addressing, for the most part, it's a convenience. It addresses convenience in technology. But when we start talking about security, which of course is a blanket over all of that now, all the convenience, all the different applications and, and utilities that we have, everyone is worried about that. You mentioned, for example, healthcare. And that's one area that I'm, you know, extremely passionate about because Everything else, really, you ain't gonna die. If the power goes out right now, it's gonna get hot, but we're not gonna die. And the, you know, if, you, uh, if somebody drains your bank account, you're not gonna die, you might have a, a few bad days. <laughs> yeah. But if somebody were to purposely target healthcare, uh, which we've seen now in a couple of, of, of incidents, uh, people will die because changing any of, the, of, the, of this data, the integrity of data, is far more important than the security of it. And that's really the issue. You know, antivirus is a good example, is kind of useless in today's environment because you're not dealing with viral type of uh, software. You know, back in the day, you'd, you'd code something that was, you know, you were looking at propagation, how it would spread. Um, that was part of the logic of the code. The second part of the logic of the code was to do whatever you already told it what to do. So do this damage, do that, do this, right? And most of it was not call home and then ask me what to do. Now every piece of software today is a call home and tell me what to do type of malicious software. Whether that be ransomware because it needs the keys, whether that be you know malware of any other kind, phishing, all these types of things require that two-way communication. So the other thing is in today's world, everything really works on memory. You don't really exploit 
a, a computer and then put files on it. You exploit it in memory and run things in memory so it can't be caught. And the moment you turn it off, it's gone. So somebody can even turn, oh, then my computer, because what would the most people do? Reboot, right? So all of that has been thought through. So you have to capture the communication part of it. And to your question specifically was, who are you going to trust to be doing that for you? Um, and to really educate you to make that choice as opposed to make that choice for you. So I'm working on this um, app service to Google, which we're gonna launch very shortly here. And yes, it's a VPN, it's an anti-phishing, it's an antivirus, it does all of this because what it's doing is looking at, that's why I have people like Mary Aiken involved, it, what it's looking at is what is machine behavior and what is human behavior. And then from there being able to determine, okay, well this is Facebook just calling home automatically and this is your interaction with Facebook as an example. Uh, and being able to actually get to a point where we can see this behavior would not be okay with this behavior. And then allow you to make a determination of, hey, we notice Facebook communicates at three o'clock in the morning every day. Are you okay with that? And then you can say no and we can actually block that at the network layer, not at the app layer. So because you can't do that technically and da 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 So, so I, I set out to create a whole new kind of software that is intended to be for my grandmother or mother to be able to use, which I, we, we're coining the term safeware. Because you've got all this malware and, and you know, where's the safeware? Where's the thing that keeps your wares safe? Um, and really it's you. So it's really about you being aware than it is you, than your software. But the terms that we, we are using as techies here don't work for the masses. So, you, so this is where I kind of went back to Hollywood and to the writers and to the psychologists to say, well, how do we put this in terms that mom can understand? I don't want to have to take you through a tutorial. I want to be able to give this to you and go, what does it do and you tell me? So it is, uh, it's a big undertaking, but uh, because there hasn't really been any kind of disruptive innovation in the area of consumer safety and cybersecurity since McAfee and Norton. And that's 25 year old technology. The news and everyone kind of uses cybersecurity as a fear, creating fear, uncertainty, and doubt. In fact, the entire industry sells cybersecurity and fear, uncertainty, and doubt as opposed to safety. You know, what, what, how can we be safer online? And you will make decisions of, well, to use this, I'm willing to give up that. Right, but is that taking away from my safety? That's really the issue. It goes back to that convenience issue, but you know we have to keep. We have to remember that there's a price to pay for convenience, right? So when you go to the convenience store down the street, that whatever you bought is going to cost you more than if you actually went to the supermarket. And that's that's the you know that's the relation that I can make here that there is an actual price, if you want to call it money, also associated to what we're giving up as convenience. So. Yes, this is very convenient, but we are going to pay a price. It's just how much. It's just a matter of how much is that price going to be.